It's a new year, 2024. So that means brand new GPUs. Hi, this is Erock on Tech, and today we're taking a look at the upcoming new GPUs from both AMD and Nvidia. Today's video will be short and straight to the point. No sponsors or anything like that. All of my information is coming from videocards.com. All sources will be linked down below in the video description. And my Patreon shout out will be at the end of the video since that apparently bothers some of you at the beginning. Anyway, let's get into it. Okay, first up is probably the worst kept secret in the GPU space, and that is the NVIDIA RTX 40 Super Series GPUs. Over on videocards.com, they have an upcoming events table, and you can see everything listed out there. Apparently, in three days at the time of filming, we're going to have a special address from NVIDIA talking about the RTX 40 Super Series, and then we have the GPU review dates, immediately followed by the launch date of the GPU, which makes complete sense because typically NVIDIA will allow reviewers to review the GPU, and then 24 hours later, the GPUs will be sold on store shelves. Now take all of these dates with a grain of salt simply because literally anything from pricing to release could change at a moment's notice. In fact, I think we saw that with the AMD Radeon 7600. A lot of reviewers had to put a disclaimer inside of their videos saying, hey, we did the full review. And then at the last minute, AMD dropped the price. And so that kind of changed some of the numbers in our charts. And we had to go back and re-talk about it. Or we didn't have time to go back and talk about it. So now we're putting a disclaimer at the beginning of the video. And so literally GPU manufacturers can change any of this information at a moment's notice. So again, take all of this with a grain of salt. Now looking at the upcoming events chart again over on videocards.com, we don't really have dates listed here. It's more of like a countdown, three days, 11 days and stuff like that. So I've taken the liberty of doing the math at the time of filming. And then on Monday, January the 15th, we will have the RTX 4070 Super reviews. And then the very next day, we will have the RTX 40 Super launch on store shelves. And then one week later, the same cycle will repeat with the 4070 Ti Super reviews on Monday, January 22nd. And then the very next day, the 4070 Ti Super will release to the public. And then one more week later on January the 29th, the RTX 4080 Super reviews will go live. And then 24 hours later, January the 30th, the RTX 4080 Super will launch. Now, like I said, take all the information with a grain of salt because dates and pricing can fluctuate until the official release. And so that's not the most important part here. The most important part is the fact that we are getting new GPUs and it will be sooner rather than later. Now, speaking of the RTX 40 Super series, let's take a look at some of the charts on videocards.com and look at the specifications they have listed for these cards. All right, so looking at the chart, we can see over to the far left, we have the RTX 4080 Super. And when it's compared to the RTX 4080, we're using a different die. We're now using the 8103 400 die as opposed to the 8103 300 die. And so we're also getting more CUDA cores. The amount of memory is the same at 16 gigabytes. The memory bus is still the same. The base clock is actually getting a marginal improvement. The boost clock is also getting another marginal improvement. And the memory clock is also getting a marginal improvement from 22.4 gigabytes up to 23 gigabytes. We also see an improvement with the memory bandwidth and it will still be rated the same at 320 watts. No confirmed MSRP, but rumors are suggesting a 999 price tag. And now let's take a look at the RTX 4070 Ti Super. What a terrible name for a GPU, absolutely awful. Now all the naming conventions aside, this actually looks like a much better GPU when compared to the RTX 4070 Ti. The RTX 4070 Ti Super is also using a different die when compared to the RTX 4070 Ti. It will now be using the 8103 275 die instead of the 8104 400 die. We're getting more CUDA cores. We're getting four more gigabytes of VRAM that is huge for this card because the 12 gigabyte VRAM limit on the 4070 Ti with the previous price tag of $800 MSRP was absolutely atrocious. The memory bus is increasing. The base clock is increasing. The boost clock is staying the same. The memory clock is staying the same, but the memory bandwidth is also increasing and it's still staying at 285 watts. Now, I'll be honest, I was never really a fan of the 4070 Ti simply because number one, coming out the gate, it already had a stigma with it. Nvidia tried to sell it to us as the RTX 4080 with 12 gigabytes, and then they unlaunched it. What a terrible fiasco that was. And so the card came into the market with a negative connotation already off the bat. But in addition to that, it was an $800 card with only 12 gigabytes of VRAM. Absolutely awful, nowhere near enough VRAM. And then the overall performance was just kind of meh at best. 
for $800, you should be a lot more excited about the products you're buying. Now, depending on the price, the 4070 Ti Super with a terrible name is actually an improvement over the 4070 Ti in almost every measurable category. We're getting four more gigabytes of VRAM. That is huge. We're getting more CUDA cores. Our base clock is improving. And now our memory bandwidth is improving. So things are getting better, like I said, in almost every measurable category. And so I think this is a good thing. This is looking good. It's, it's all gonna come down to pricing, obviously. Worst case scenario at the exact same price of $800. Ideally, they could drop it a little bit and maybe make it a $750 card. That will remain to be seen, but hey, one can hope, right? And now looking at the RTX 4070 Super, when compared to the RTX 4070, once again, we do have a die change. We do see an increase in CUDA core count. The VRAM is staying exactly the same. The memory bus is staying exactly the same. We do have an increase in the base clock. The boost clock is exactly the same. The memory clock is exactly the same. The memory bandwidth is exactly the same. But unfortunately, we do have a slight increase in overall power requirements going from 200 watts up to 220 watts. I was looking forward to the 4070 Super because because I released a video called Why Nobody Wants an RTX 4070. Now at the time when I made that video, that statement was true. But after that video, a lot of people started buying RTX 4070s and then coming to my channel, seeing that video, leaving a comment and yelling at me in the comment section, basically telling me how I was wrong and everybody's buying a 4070. So I'm like, all right, I, okay. And so overall I figured the 4070 Super would probably be a car that a lot of gamers go for. But honestly, I was expecting a little bit more, but really when you look at the specifications, assuming all of this is completely true and accurate, then you are talking about everything being the same except the CUDA core count and the base clock speed. And that's it. So it really comes down to money and the pricing. Rumors are speculating that it's probably going to have the same price tag at $599. And then the 4070 will be moved down to $549 permanently. And so there will be a $50 price difference there. And then they'll leave it up to the consumers to decide. And then also what I think will probably happen is the 4080 will be discontinued. And the 4070 Ti will also be discontinued. And then NVIDIA will just focus on pushing the 4080 Super and the 4070 Ti Super. And then leave the 4070 and 4070 Super below that. That's my my best educated guess based on looking at market trends and looking at the rumor mill and what people are suggesting. And then also to me, that just makes sense from a business perspective. I mean, the 4080 was negatively received. And at this point, it has so much negative connotation associated with it, as I like to say, that even with a price drop, I don't really know if gamers would get excited about the card just because there's so many people who view that card in a negative light. You only get one chance to make a first impression and the 4080, unfortunately due to the price, made a very bad first impression on a lot of gamers. And the same thing with the 4070 Ti. And so I think it's a smart move to get rid of those cards, refresh them with a super variance and then lower the pricing if possible. Even if the 4070 Ti super stays at the same price, the 4080 super has to have a lower MSRP than than what the 4080 had. It cannot be $1,200. It will not succeed at that price point. But okay, that's enough about NVIDIA. Let's talk very briefly about AMD. I only have one card to talk about, and that is the AMD Radeon 7600 XT. And basically all we know about the 7600 XT is that it is a thing, but that's all we know. We don't really know anything else about it. If you look at this article from videocards.com, it says not 10 or 12, but 16 gigabytes. And the reason why is simply because at one point the 7600 XT was rumored to have a 10 or 12 gigabyte configuration. We weren't sure which one, but it was somewhere in that ballpark. And now supposedly some filings with the EEC has gigabyte confirming there will be a 16 gigabyte model of the 7600 XT. We obviously do not have official pricing or a release date, but the current guess or speculation is late January, 2024. I'm kind of excited about this card depending on how it works out. Even at 10 gigabytes, it would be better than the base 7600, but at 12 gigabytes, it would definitely be a card that I could say, hey, you know what? At the right price, go for it. Because the RX 7600 to me is a completely disappointing card. Very similar to the RTX 4060, another card that's just a complete disappointment. Even at a lower end price point of 275 to $300, those cards are simply not exciting. But with the right price, if the 7600 XT can come in at around $350 max, that would be a card to really get excited for, especially with 12 gigabytes of VRAM. 
But what if it actually has 16 gigabytes of VRAM? And what if you could get it for below $400? That would be insane. That would be awesome. And I'm not surprised to hear that this card is coming because it's not uncommon for AMD to have an XT and a non-XT model or an XT or non-XT variant of their GPUs. Additionally, AMD is no stranger to responding to Nvidia. So if Nvidia puts out new cards, then AMD can come along and put out a new card or two and or lower pricing on existing cards. And I think that's what we're gonna see here because AMD is no stranger to doing game bundles, running deals and promotions and lowering prices in order to better compete with Nvidia. In fact, I found one more article where supposedly the Radeon 7900 XTX dropped down to 799 for a brief period on amazon.com. I'm pretty upset because I missed out on this. And if I had known about it, I probably would have bought one because that is an absolute steal. So here are my final thoughts on the whole situation. If you're in the market for a new GPU, wait. Don't buy in January, wait at least until February because by early to mid February, we should have all the new cards on the market with proper reviews and we will be able to see how everything stacks up and compares to one another. Again, we just saw the 7900 XTX drop all the way down to 799. That is a phenomenal deal. So if AMD did it once, they can and probably will do it a second time at some time in the future. And if they did it on their highest end product, they will probably do it to other cards as well. And so AMD will be offering a lot of value for gamers out there. Additionally, I do think Nvidia is looking to discontinue the 4070 Ti and the 4080. And so existing inventory of those cards sitting on shelves, not moving, will likely get discounted. So wait until February, until you have all your options on the table and then make a decision from there. I will be buying one of the new NVIDIA 40 Super Series cards. I'm not sure which one yet, but I will be buying one. And I may go ahead and pick up a 7600 XT at some point. So get subscribed so you can watch the reviews on that and you don't miss out. If you like this type of content, do me a favor, hit that like button because it goes a long way in helping me out. I wanna say a massive shout out and thank you to all of my awesome Patreon members. You guys are absolutely incredible and I really appreciate you and I cannot say thank you enough. So thank you for the continued support. And if you wanna be a Patreon member, you can join for just $1. Links will be down below in the pinned comment and the description. Thank you so much for watching. And until next time, E-Rock out.